In this video, we're going to discuss the solution to question 14 from the practice final exam for Math 1220, in which case we're asked to consider the series where we take the sum where k equals 2 to infinity of 1 over k times the natural log of k squared. Uh, and that's to say the natural log of k, that whole quantity is squared right there. There's two parts to this question. This question is going to ask us to do, to do some uh, remainder estimates, some error estimates associated to approximating integrals, uh, sorry, uh, approximating series with respect to partial sums. And it's broken up in two parts. The first part, what you can see on the screen right now, which, were, which actually has a statement right here. The series can be found convergent by the integral test. So this is not something that you have to prove. This is given to us, that the integral test uh, will provide that this thing is convergent. Now you are asked to verify by computing the following formula, which be aware that, again, you're not gonna cite the integral test. This is already going on here. But if one was using the integral test, you'd have to compute essentially this integral right here. Now there is one important difference I wanna mention that the series starts off at k equals two, but the integral is gonna start off with n. So we're having a placeholder right here, which we could easily insert two into that to determine the convergence by the integral test. Now, in order to calculate this improper integral, I would recommend using a u substitution. Take u to be the natural log of x, and therefore du equals one over x dx. And you'll notice that the dx, of course, is there, and then the one over x is there as well. And so then this would translate as we switch the switch the variable here, you're going to get a du over u squared. I also want to change the bounds, right? As you plug n into this formula, you're going to get the natural log of n as your lower bound. And as we do infinity right here, treating this as a limit, we take the natural log of infinity, that is, take the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of x, and that itself will become infinity. So we still have this improper integral. Now, integrating this thing right here, uh, well, by the power rule, since we have a 1 over u squared, we could treat that as u to the negative 2. That would raise the power by 1 to be u to the negative 1, that is 1 over u. And then divide by that exponent, which is a negative 1. You get a negative 1 over u for the antiderivative. Evaluate this from negative natural log of n to infinity. Now, because of the negative sign, I actually want to switch it to be a positive, so I'm going to switch the order of the limits there. And so we get 1 over u. Um, as you evaluate from infinity to the natural log of n. And then as you evaluate these expressions right here, you're going to get 1 over the natural log of n minus 1 over infinity. Of course, 1 over infinity is to be interpreted as a limit. We're taking the limit as u approaches infinity of 1 over u, and that'll go off towards 0. And so this integral is equal to 1 over the natural log of n. And this is what part A is asking us to do. Now, going back to this idea with the integral test, if you plugged in n equals 2, into this formula, you would see that this is a finite number. So therefore, the integral is convergent, which implies the series is convergent uh, via this integral test. So then look at part B here. What is the smallest choice for n that would guarantee that the partial sum, where k ranges from 2 to n, of 1 over k times the natural log of k squared, uh, what, what would be the smallest choice of n to guarantee that this partial sum would be, would be accurate to be an accurate approximation of the series to within one over the natural log of 100, right? And so this is a statement about error bounds right here. So this is some prescribed error, and we need to find that our remainder, Rn of x, needs to be less than this. Now, the important thing to remember about the integral test, and this is what we mentioned earlier, is that the remainder, the remainder of the integral test will be bounded above by the integral from n to infinity, of the function 1 over x times the natural log of x squared dx. And as we showed in part a, this is equal to 1 over the natural log of n, right? And so this is supposed to be less than or equal to 1 over the natural log of 100. And so this inequality right here we need to solve. Um, well, taking reciprocals, uh, we see that the natural log of n must be greater than or equal to the natural log of 100. The inequality switches direction when you take reciprocals. And then exponentially on both sides, which is an increasing function, thus doesn't change the direction of the inequality. We're going to get that n needs to be greater than or equal to 100. So 100 is the smallest uh, number that we can guarantee uh, that this thing will be accurate to this prescribed amount of error. And so in this exercise, what we did here is we, on part A, we computed the error bound 
uh, associated to the series. And then in part B, we used it to determine how accurate, how many, how many ends do we need in order to guarantee accurate to a certain level. And so you'll see something like this very similar on the on the final exam. Of course, it might not be an error bound associated to the integral test. It could be some of the other error bounds that we've seen uh, this semester. So be prepared to answer any of those.